could probably go as far as to say that The Incredibles is my favorite movie of all time. I've watched this movie so many times that I have the entire sound of the movie burned into my memory, and I've cherished memories of walking out of the cinema and just bolting down the street mimicking Dash, because I was that kid. And even looking back on it as an adult, I only discover more and more fantastic elements of the whole thing. But I also have a memory of something else. It's a faint memory from a pretty short moment in my life. I remember being Dash, running across a road and then dying again and again and again. I remember hating this experience despite it being the literal embodiment of my childhood dreams. And so over the last month I've been streaming our experience as we re-dive into the wonderful world of The Incredibles, the video game. Go follow me on Twitch by the way to catch these events in the moment. If this goes well, maybe it's a new series. And with that out of the way, what about me? Oh, I know we're living like it's 2004, but my goodness have we backtracked in quality from the original movie. At least we got crappy JPEGs of their poster art. But other than the visuals, this actually seems like a nice expansion. The glory days looked fun, and now we get to actually experience it. Press this button to activate your punches. <clears throat> and I mean, the color palette's really nice. Don't forget that the more you charge, the more damage you'll do. Press this button to activate your Incredit Punches. Hmm. So, it's nice that they kept Samuel L. Jackson, but the version of the game I played was a little bit scuffed, so... Anytime anyone decides to speak their mind, absolutely all of the other audio clips would cut off, making everyone sound very lame, really. Bold words for a mere mime. Where's your boss, Bon Voyage? <laughs> Also, our shadows are squares in this version. But okay, we can get used to that. It's the glory days. These electric henchmen are obscenely French, but it's a nice affair. Oh my god, that's a thumbnail right there. But yes, as you can expect, this game is to follow the plot of the movie. With a few expansions on the side, like this helicopter fight where you've got to throw bomb voyage bombs back. And then we... Incredi jump up to that building. Is this meant to be this moment? Didn't think that was a super thing. And we never actually see Bon Voyage in person. I would have thought that'd be, you know, a, a good boss fight, but oh well. Instead, it's just a poor quality rip directly from the movie and another JPEG. Lovely. And then we experience Elastigirl's evening in which I discovered a bit of a game-breaking mechanic. I just have to press R to win. This is, that's how this, uh, hey, bam, done. But sure, as a tutorial sequence, it's all right. I get the mechanics, it's pretty simple. Let's move on. Why won't you let me help you? Nice. You know, the sequence sure loses a lot of weight without the music underscoring it. It's at this point in the movie, we jump forwards 20 years. So how do you make a level out of that? Well, while I'd love there to be a very thematic grinding level of pressing buttons in an office job or mash the A button to throw Mr. Huff through more and more walls, the game, of course, does some skipping. It prides itself on turning two hours into 15, but we forego a lot of moments, actually. I don't really care about the NSA element, but it's at this point we meet Dash coming home from school and Violet dealing with her crush. They all come together and argue at the table. That could be a fun sequence, being Elastigirl trying to stop the feud or something. Even still, it's not that bad, but we're back to Mr. Incredible again in that burning building scene next. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this level is filled with some actual jokers. And actually, the difficulty spike on this is mad. Can I reach that? No. Horrified, and I'm dead. <laughs> and then Mr. Incredible flies around the room and then dies right at the end. Why can't I? I screwed up. But I actually really like how it retcons the incident as being intentional with all these pirates. Oh, I'm sorry, is this building just spitting out junk at infinite amounts? That's a little... strange. Now it's time for the real reason you'd pick up The Incredibles game. It's that dash image on the back of the box that's the real marketing. And hey, it's original content. The guys clearly know that dash running is the highlight of the film, so let's grab one in early with dash running to school. Okay. When I... Yeah. 
This is a Mark Speed level with some quality animation. As Dash, the kid who has the most mobile freedom of anyone in the world of The Incredibles, you have to ensure that absolutely no harm is sent your way in any form. Hit a car? Die. Restart. Don't make a jump? Die. Restart. Use the boost button too much such that you die of friction burn? Die. Restart. And the real kicker, perfect to go alongside going too fast, there's a timer, so don't go too slow either. Don't make it to school on time? Die. Restart. Start. Your happy-go-lucky dreams of blazing through the streets of Metroville like the hyperactive kid you are? Gone! To make it past this level, you have to perfect boosting a lot, but not too much. You can touch nothing, memorize every next move every vehicle is going to make, and don't you dare have any fun doing it. This level alone, I think, scrapped any joy I had for this game as a kid, grinding through the boringly ordinary levels only to have this part punish you at every supersonic step. But you know, actually, as an adult, it's not that bad. At least there's regular checkpoints. I can get to those, just about. And you know what? It's nice to see some other characters. We've had a good bit of Mr. Incredible up to this point. Let's have some Vi. Huh? Oh, there's no Violet level? And Jack-Jack doesn't even make an appearance? Okay, so who's next? Oh, it's Mr. Incredible again. Great. Beach landing! To be fair, it makes sense. The movie's much more of a family drama for the other characters through like the first half of the movie. In his poorly fitting old suit, Bob is to explore the jungle for the first time, meeting Omnidroids and all sorts of robot guys, as well as dealing with electricity hurdles and a big open area that spirals upwards. So if you miss a single jump, you gotta retrace your steps. Not to mention hidden incredible jumps everywhere that make no sense, and once you're out of there, you're into another one. No man is an island. Now with bigger robots, and a shooter sequence that took me a while to understand the goal for. And then there was Volcanic Eruption. Okay, at this point, by the way, I'm about two hours into the game. It's time for our final boss of the stream. You know where this goes. It's Omnidroid 08. A pretty obvious boss idea with all sorts of possibilities. Throwing Incredible around, hopping island to island, the big lava chopper blades, and of course, the big finale. So here it is, in which it rolls, it throws, it jumps, it beams, it swipes, giving me some major flash backs to my old content on the channel, and in retaliation we throw, and throw, and throw, one, two, six, eleven, twenty-three times? How long does this even go on for? Is there nothing more dynamic to do? It turns out that there are three health bars on this guy, and each one takes ten hits each. What's the difference between phases? Difficulty. It'll laser more and roll around longer, but otherwise it's just an intense grind waiting for the narrow opening it gives for each hit. And don't you dare die from the triple digit amount of attacks you'll have to face. This is bad. Needless to say, I finished this in part two, but at least I learned how to roll. Oh, thank God. Oh. By the way, I know this is in a video essay format, but we did live stream this game, and out of it came these edited down highlight videos, all of which are currently available on Daz Reviews 2. Or maybe some of these are more your thing. And if you're not subbed to Daz Reviews 1, then this is your reminding prompt to do so. And thanks for watching halfway through. Thank goodness that grind's over. Who are we playing as next? Oh, it's him again. With an even more confusing shooter sequence where you can't even see the damage you've done, and once you've cleared the base of goons, it's time for a mini boss. That was quick. Well, this is a riveting boss fight. How compelling. And giving me flashbacks again. And following that is more Mr. Incredible and another Omnidroid boss fight! One level in between the same boss fight twice. What's the difference, you ask? He's got those spinny blades now, and I learned that I could just punch it directly. The damage is so worth it! Hey, isn't this meant to be the part where we meet Syndrome? Why isn't he like an element of this fight? Or how about prevalent at all? Even the movie rip just skips the part Syndrome's in in this sequence. But all right, I've learned the ways of the grind, and 21 minutes later, the worst part is finally over. The Bob bulk in the middle is over. No, it's not. It's Syndrome's base next, giving us right away the same mini boss fight robot again. No changes, just mini boss, major boss, and mini boss again. I thought we escaped to the jungle to avoid just going through the numbers and grinding through button presses over and over. It's at this point we finally have some new enemies. Gunman with more armor. That's about it. And the purpose of this level is to constantly press buttons to access the next spot and dodge through lasers. There's still these giant turnstiles to activate things that seem awfully archaic to me, and a lot of them are time-based for no reason, but sure. Might as well make the most out of your mechanic, I guess. 
And as a finale to that, we then have this triple electric puzzle piece of timings to maneuver. Also, there's an incredible jump in the middle of this that's really hard to recognize in the room. This is a really dumb mechanic. Finishing up with one final room of infinitely spawning guys that I only realize now haven't actually changed after all this time. Our very first level had French guys with electric batons and flying people. This is identical. There is no enemy variety here at all. No wonder it feels so bland. Oh, thank God, it's Mrs. Incredible now and her overpowered arm. Goons? Exactly the same, as are the corridors, it seems. Her gimmick for this level is a more extreme version of before, constantly just having to press buttons, button after button after button. I guess because she's a pilot, she just knows her way around a console? There are these new guys, though, shield guys, always accompanied by a very convenient bomber man to take the whole crew out, and the rest of the level is swinging on a hook and pressing buttons to make it go further somewhere. As a level by itself, it's not a disaster, maybe a little repetitive and unmemorable, but considering the bigger picture has six Mr. Incredible levels back to back to back, only to have the misses appear in one follow-up level just pressing buttons and then moving on is more than a little underwhelming, I would say. But since the family is all here at this point in the movie, not that we see any of that build-up in game, it's time for the next magnum opus of the movie, the 100 Mile Dash. The real, real reason you would buy this game. And you know what? I actually had a lot of fun with this. Obviously, the real scene is like one of the best moments in cinematic history, at the very least for Pixar, but at this point, I had a good grasp on handling these mark speed dash levels, and the actual obstacles weren't as hard to handle this time. The timer was the bigger enemy I struggled with as a kid, but grown up, I could handle boosting a lot better. Plus, having these tunnels you could literally run upside down on was a lot of fun. And then you could run on water. Actually didn't feel that different. But then with the best part over, the level tries to get funky, putting us on this looping level design with all sorts of really strong turns that without fail will reset you way back to loop one if you die. I lost 22% of progress at one point, one fifth of the entire level retracted, and the directions to follow aren't exactly clear. Where am I going? Where am I going? And we're back again. All right, gra- and we're dead. <laughs> no! That wasn't a checkpoint! But I have to go straight forwards. Gotcha. Or not. No! That's- that's death. This is cool though. I can't jump? What I'm trying to say is I spent way too long on this. Anyway, it eventually ends with more tunnels, which is a big fun plus. Still hard to sight read though, and that's the last we'll see of Dash. But you know who we haven't seen at all? It's Violet's time! Her level sucks. I mean, I get it. Kinda hard to make her power work. What you have to do now is spy on henchmen, then press a button to go invisible and walk right past them. You die in one hit, you die if you touch water or plants, and you can be invisible for only five seconds. It's slow, it's boring, it's hard to manage, and it doesn't articulate what to do very well. To be fair, I think I'd struggle too. Yet the Game Boy version actually used the shield power- oh. And then there's Incredible, another highlight from the movie that actually only has one headcount in the movie. And here, it's pretty fun. Kind of being that open world, fast paced level I was hoping for, with some pinball mechanics too of having to hoik yourself up to destroy all the turrets. Though at the same time, this was very hit or miss. Not to mention there's loads of gunners who just whittle your health down and there's not much you can really do about it. And then you end up at a dead end. Turns out being open world meant you'd have to slow down and explore all of these turrets that they didn't even tell you was the goal of the level. Needless to say, I got stuck a couple of times, which is just the worst thing to happen for such a high adrenaline level. Eventually I found my way, grumbled through some electricity hurdles and then reached a turret I could see, but not ever reach. As a kid, this was as far as I got. Literally put it down here. The bulk in the middle just grinded me down and I couldn't be bothered to work out how this plays out. Turns out, you have to go the wrong way until it reveals the correct way. What kind of level design is this? Terrible level design is the answer, really. But one mini boss fight later and it's all over. Finally. So as we reach our final act, we get one of those rare cutscenes and another level with Elastigirl, which essentially boils down to more buttons and little else. And I mean, they really phone it in for this level. There's one bit that's different. Hooey! That was quite fun, actually. I don't know what they were going for either. And then it's over. We get one of those rare cutscenes. Hey, hey, isn't this the same one as before? Just we hop to Bob now? Okay. That's a cool idea to do four times for each person, but now? Right at the end? I think someone just couldn't be bothered to make another cutscene. And they didn't do it for the kids. 
still, it's Bob's final level, Rocket Silo. It's actually not got a bad narrative with him building up the escape rocket. And it's got it all. Buttons, hooks, lasers, dodging, basic goons, shutter doors to lift, a room that goes against logical level design. Like, what, there's a button that doesn't work and you have to kill all the enemies in the room, but there's like six of them to take out, but only two appear at a time, making it feel like they're infinitely spawned. Is there not a manual of game design that these guys could have read before building this game? There's that same mini boss again, a shooter sequence that finally makes sense, that same mini boss again again more spinny buttons questionable platforming and eventually 40 minutes later it's over <sighs> you'd think these jpegs would get a little old and they do time for save the world and the final boss the big family connective i can handle five phases i'm sure it's just each character's segments starting with more Bob trying to nab that remote the first time. And then the kids run away with it. Time for some dash dodging. Maybe a lake to sprint over or so. Oh no, we're, we're back to Bob, huh? To be fair, we didn't actually fight. We just pressed the X button a bunch. Time to actually do some damage as the kids do a distract. Sure, with the same old rocks spread everywhere. Who needs a remote for damage anyway, right? Then the kids drop it, so it's more Bob to get the remote again, under its foot. This counts as an entire phase? Twice? Oh no. Where's Elastigirl? Is there not gonna be a lamppost manhole cover segment or Violet sneaking to the remote? Oh, here's Frozone though, with his interesting ice animation. Do we get to play as him? You do in the GBA game. They have all sorts of sequences for this moment, actually. In this, no, he's just another identical distraction. Don't die here, by the way, or you'll go back to phase one. And then for the final phase, Elastigirl is here with that distant remote shot. There's the Pizza Planet truck, and you shoot when the reticles align. The end. My camera's frozen. No, not now. This isn't allowed. No, you need my reactions. <sighs> Needless to say, though it looked like the developers were pretty pleased with themselves based on the behind the scenes video on it, this game was awfully hollow, as most movie games are. Six hours wasted, not 15. The level design was bland, the same enemies were in the first and last level, things were frustrating, very little satisfaction, and to top it all off, it wasn't even a good adaptation of the movie. I know there were restrictions with the time, budget, and tech, but six Bob levels in a row? One Violet level? This mini boss? This entire fight? Right? There was so much potential here from everything else. Here's some iconic scenes that they could have worked with. A cave level beneath the island, sneaking through the high class sections. The kids sneaking past their mum, Helen flying the plane. The family in boat mode, that's in the GBA version. I'll even take quick time events, they existed by this point. It could be for the montage or true to form boss fights, Helen swinging side by side or crushing against the wall, venting, a violet one on one boss fight, dash punching people. How about a full family boss fight? Fight, no? Barreling down the street or just simple enough, have everyone playable for the finale. Screw it, give me a where's my super suit level somehow or mash the A button to make your neck longer and win the argument, I don't care. There wasn't even a Jack Jack or Syndrome to be found, this is awful. The Incredibles is one of those top tier productions, but of course the soulless grind of corporate merchandising still just had to do its thing. I mean, the parents' voice actors were replaced. No wonder Elastigirl sounded so southern. They definitely what? need to be more flexible. I definitely need to be more flexible. There are five versions of this game, likely liquidizing any focus on time for focus on range. And there's the GBA version too. And it's funny, they actually made their own sequel back in those days too. Well, now that turned out. Either way, I think I'm more than done putting in the time to this terrible adaptation. Movies get a hard rep for trying to mimic games, but sometimes it could be just as awful the other way around. Check out these videos to watch us break down as it happened, and do let me know what movie game you'd like to see me cover next. Maybe it'll be a regular thing, at least over on our Twitch streams. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.